What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. 2022 Panini Chronicles Draft Picks Football. Four box break. Picker Things number two just sold out. And we're giving away a free box. Now, just remember, guys, there is no checklist out yet. Uh, still, I have not seen a checklist on either group breaks or even just the official. So, of course, you know, we're kind of winging it just with you guys. A lot of these teams are around $10.99 to $20, so they're really, really cheap. So, uh, remember, some teams could potentially not be represented, or if they're not represented, they might not have autographs but they are represented in, in base cards and rookies so just remember that of course uh, and of course since we're doing a promo to get the two teams you know those teams are still being sold for a chance at the promo so still good risk because these boxes are about 150 to 200 you buy two teams at 10 bucks each and you only spend 20 dollars potentially get a hit and if you don't you have a chance to win a free box for that's 150 to 200 so we got that going on of course all card ship and then we're going to go by current team if active team they play for the longest and retired so I had the uh, 2022 NFL Draft opened up yesterday from Wiki, and that's what I'm going by. And if I don't see them drafted, then uh, we'll uh, have to look up their Wikipedia page or online article somewhere where they been may have been signed to a team. So there's that. And then at the end, we'll see who gets part of that promotion for the free box. And uh, Last Ball Mojo, I believe, was... Um, Where's Greg at? Right here, Tennessee Titans. So we'll look at that later. And I'll have this open here for you guys. But, like I said, here we go. There's everybody there. Now we have uh, three different breaks worth right here. One, two, and three. Let's see if we can roll one of those numbers. If I roll a one, two, we're gonna go with the left. Three, four for the middle, five, six for the right side. Oh, that was a horrible roll. Don't do that one. That one went way over there. No, that one sucked too. There we go. That was a little bit better. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So there we go. All right. I'll just leave this up here because we're probably going to use them anyways. Mariners have five guys playing constantly, batting under 200 with Hanager, Franz, and Lewis Allen Crawford when you're getting suspended. Counting sucks. All right. Well, I hope they get better for you, Chad. It seems like they're causing you a lot of stress. Just go look at that Joe Burrow patch autograph, and it'll make everything feel better. Because that's real life right there. <laughs> See, thankfully, I only feel like that with more of my Eagles and Kings. But I'm sure that's how you are with your Mariners. David Bell. Alec Pierce, nice patch autograph. And I believe he was drafted. And I want to say it was either Buffalo or Indianapolis. Because I feel like those guys and the Ravens have had so many hits the last couple of picket teams we've done with this. And I'm going to say it's Indianapolis. Yes, Colts. I know, Chad. Honestly, geographically, is the dumbest thing. Two Southern California teams that don't even ever play in the snow and the cold are now going to play against teams in the cold and the snow. It's the dumbest thing ever. But I get it. It's all about money. Honestly, I think Oregon's going to follow anyways, and if you guys follow too, eventually, I think you guys are going to be out there too. I don't think Oregon stays unless, like, somehow they get offered more money in the sense or they somehow pack 12 to bring some better teams over, which I don't think it's possible. Um, at this point, man, honestly, we should, they should just create two conferences, like NFL and NBA and everything. You know, East-West, whatever, NLAL, and just have something like that at some point. You might as well just do that. College ticket, Bryce Hall.
Drake London to 99. And Jack Sanborn for Wisconsin. All right, no Jack Sanborn. And Jack is American football linebacker for the Bears. Bears. They, I mean, that's what I'm saying though, Chad. Honestly, at some point you might as well just split it up or instead of having power five, power six conferences, just make it like power two or power four conferences. I don't know. It's all about money at the end of the day anyways, right? It's just going to be so funny in two years to just see USC and UCLA play against all those teams and they're just not even used to something like that. I don't know. Whatever. They can't even win the Pac-12, but yet they're going to go over there and play in the Big Ten. <laughs> Losers. Spiller. It's like USC has every opportunity to showcase their talent to the, to, to the NCAA and get a bid for a big bowl game, but they just can't even beat their own teams in the, in the Pac-12. Well, I mean, what's, what, what is that going to do? That's the funniest thing. That's just the funniest thing to me. And I, I do feel like USC is cursed. So, they can always get the biggest recruits ever and they still don't win. Chargers, Texas a and running back. David Ojabo, Najee, I'm on your redemption right here. Contenders college ticket autographs, card number 10, Richard White. Well, Terry, I mean, as an SC fan, I mean, at the end of the day, a coach can only do so much. It's got to be the players. I mean, yes, I'm not saying Nick Saban is, isn't a great isn't a great coach, right? He is. But I guess his reputation precedes him, right? He's such a great coach that the best players in the United States want to play for him, right? But he's not on the field playing for them. He still has to they still have to execute themselves. And Richard White is a buccaneer. Like I don't know. I mean I don't know. I don't know, like for me, I'm, I love Mario Cristobal as a coach. I feel like he was just one of those coaches that connected with players, right? He was a former big college athlete, right? But, I don't know. I feel like college football, they rely on their coaches a lot more than anything, but it's really at the end of the day, the players on the field are still doing it, just like in the NFL. It's just more, I guess, what motivates these players to want to win, right? The coach has to motivate them to win. And I would hope that now with all these NIL deals, these players, of course, will still obviously want to... They don't have the... They're not going to have the... They don't, they're not going to have to worry about potentially showing out, I guess. Is, is it going to be a good thing is what I'm saying? Like, how do you guys feel? 
Is it a good thing that these college players are getting paid nowadays? Because they don't have the pressure to, obviously, to continue to do well and try to make it to the NFL. Some of them are going to cash in on millions of dollars as a college athlete, but is that going to mean they're going to kind of give up and just cash in in college and then whatever after that? I don't know. It's like Lincoln Riley left Oklahoma because they were leaving to the SEC in a few years. But then now, USC is leaving and going to the Big Ten, which I don't know if that's even a better thing for them. I think it was just more about money. Romeo Dobes. But if I'm going back to Chad's question, yeah, I think I would have taken uh, Riley over any other coach that you've had since Carroll. I did like Ed Orgeron. I thought he was a great player's coach, but obviously that's that and he can recruit for sure. He connects with the players, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Romeo was a Green Bay Packer. Yeah, I just think that there's going to be a lot more teams moving around divisions nowadays and conferences. So I think it's just best to just kind of, like how Chad said, just kind of have it two divisions or in the same conference, right? Do Pac-12 and Big Ten, but they're in the same main big conference and do that, you know. You can combine like the ACC and the SEC. I know it's going to be kind of tough just because there's going to be a lot of teams, but I don't know. Maybe you can kind of still kind of divide them up. I don't know. It's kind of tough. Traylon Burks. Bigger market, Daniel? I mean, Oklahoma wasn't a big enough market. I mean, all it is, all it is in Oklahoma is about football. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you now, you might, we, they might be playing in LA, but LA is not a football. Uh, LA is not a football uh, city. There's so much more than just f football here in LA. Moon. I mean, let's just be honest. Was Riley just tired of living in Oklahoma? <laughs> so, in a nice house right here by the beach. Loving that sunshine of California. Jeremiah Moon is a Baltimore Raven. Yeah. At that point, do you make Division 1-1 one, one, and then Division 1-1-2 one, one, and then that way? Because... And honestly, if I had to choose between UCLA and USC, if I was like a coach, I mean, I mean, actually, even as a as a student, UC, USC's campus is great. It's like right in the heart of downtown, but UCLA is in like Brentwood over there, and it is a beautiful area over there. Well, we'll find out. I mean, they'll still be here in the Pac-12 for two more years. I guess let's just see how they do here for the first two years, and then that'll give us a better sense of what's going to happen with them. But it's just going to—it's just so weird, though, for them to be in the Big Ten. Mayfield. Don't worry, Chad. I don't. I don't see Oregon or, or, or Washington staying in the Pac-12 if somehow they don't get other schools to want to play with us that are competitive or, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's already been bids already put to go join. Out of 25, Matt Corral. Woo! Look at that. Nice. 
college ticket. Where did Matt Corral go to again? Carolina, that's right. And a Kobe Dean. But as a season ticket holder, though, Chad, I don't know if you ever go to away games. You know. But uh, would it be more enticing now that you, like, let's say if, if Washington goes and plays in the Big Ten to kind of go see a game like in Ohio State or in Michigan or in, you know, any of those other schools? I think yeah, that's kind of cool, though. In that sense. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Well, I guess is what I'm saying is that, like, maybe now, I guess, you wouldn't have to worry about traveling and playing against those schools because they're going to come play you eventually, right? Every other year. However they decide to split it up. Can a conference get rid of teams, though? Tell me that. Like, let's just say they're absorbing... They're going to absorb USC and UCLA, and let's just say Oregon and Washington follows. Do they still keep all the schools that are part of that conference, or do they, like, downgrade? Like, hey, guys, you guys really suck. We're gonna let you guys go, or do they have to wait till the contract is up? Because that's that's what I'm assuming happened, right? The, the USC and UCLA contract is up, and in the past they've never decided to leave. So, you know, um, I guess they just always renewed it, right? So basically, what USC and UCLA did is probably like talk to each other out, right? Hey, let's get the hell out of here together in 2024 when we're free. And that, I'm assuming that's what they did, right? To 75, Patty Mahomes. Burks. To 99. Patty Mahomes red. A couple nice Patrick Mahomes colors for the Kansas City Chiefs. And we have a Josh Jovi. In the zone, auto zone. 19 out of 49. And I'll double check both of these right now. I remember this guy, I just don't remember the team. AJ Brown. Jeremiah Gemmel. And Pierce, Damian Pierce. I think they would. I don't know how every, every other conference does it, but I'm pretty sure they do, right? They don't always play all the teams in the conference. They save a couple of them for for smaller schools slash schools they you know partner up and play with. Like you, like this year, Oregon starting their. I remember they signed this maybe like almost eight years ago, but Oregon's finally playing against Georgia this year. So they played Georgia this year, home and away, for the next two years. All right, let's look these ones up really quick. All right. That guy's not drafted, so I have to look that dude up. I think we're going to have to also look at this dude, too. No, actually, Burks is a Tennessee Titan. There you go. That's last spot mojo, Greg Dash. Was a first round pick receiver out of Arkansas. Alright, Josh Joe is not. 
Damian Pierce was a fourth round pick, Houston Texans. Alright, let's look these other two guys up really quick. Is a cornerback for the Eagles, undrafted. Undrafted to the Eagles. Did it win a national championship in 2020? Fly go fly by Cody with that one. And then we have Jeremiah Jamal. 49ers. 49ers. Undrafted free agent 49ers. Victor with that one. Alrighty guys, last box here. And again, um, the next one is actually pretty much almost sold out. So we'll probably be able to run this back next. Uh, that's like the only break that's super, super close at the time being right now. It's down to three left. And the following break is down to 9 already. We're down to 19 in photogenic uh, pack filler. And then obviously we're down to 3 left in SPA. So I'm pretty sure we'll get done with the SPA. The two remaining Chronicles draft picks. And then hopefully, like I said, maybe do some of that hip parade. Hip parade down down to 15. The last two boxes of SPA maybe. Uh, probably, Chad. I'm sure Nick would be the one working on that. If he tells me to do it, I'll do it. But most likely, he usually does those. But we probably most likely will, just like we did yesterday. Trey McBride to 49 in the zone, auto zone. Arizona Cardinals. Spiller. Cole Turner from Nevada. Ross. Justin Ross. Najee. Desmond Ritter. And Chris Olave. Very nice. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if we'll do seven free spots again, though, but no problem. We can try that, probably. And another Desmond Ritter. Alright, so let's look at a couple of those players there. Justin Ross. Alright, no Justin Ross. And Cole Turner was a fifth round pick for the Washington Commanders. It's going to Garrett's. And then Chris Olave was drafted by, uh, who did he go to? Jets? No, Jets got the other guy from Ohio State, huh? Olave Saints, actually, sorry. Saints. 
Saints. Noah and Saints Garrett. All right, let's look at this Justin Ross really quick. Justin Ross is a wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs, undrafted. Yes, thank you, Adam. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, it is pretty easy to find some of these guys, especially when they play for bigger schools. Looks like he won a national championship in 2018. Alright, well for the most part guys, I think the names I'm seeing here are players in the NFL or players that are drafted. Alright. And of course these are all team hits here for these ones, so they're all tagged. But just to be safe. We'll, um, we'll still do a randomizer in case there's any other vet base that might not be a team affiliated, you know, over here or something like that, just to be safe, since we don't really know too much about that, and then uh, somebody will get the all-in-one lot, if there is any. So again, this was a giveaway break, so obviously you've got two or more teams, you have a chance to win, so we'll use the same dice roll for both, and then Aaron got two. That is one entry. Adam Coverman, you got four, so that's two entries. Brody with just one. Diego just one. Donald with two. Garrett with two. Greg just one. Jeffrey with two. And Jerry Bennington with just one. Joseph K with two. One, 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 one. Sean with four. Steve one, Tanner two. And Will with two. All right, so out of a possible potentially 16, we only got 11. So 11 names there, better odds there for you guys. And then we'll just get all the teams and team at number one gets all the Potential non un unaffiliated teams, base cards, hits, whatever was there. Roll 11 times, 6 and a 5. Free box goes to number 1 here after 11 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Will Comstock, free box for you. Nice. What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? And 11 times here, team number one gets the unaffiliated teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Dallas Cowboys. So, Coverman, if there is any non numbered or non, not non numbered, but any non affiliated teams, it'll be yours. All right, here we go, guys. Appreciate it, guys. So that's uh, break number two. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if number three sold out, which it did. We'll be running that back next. Appreciate it, guys.